been a hot start to the year. So let's talk about the hottest books that I've read so far this year, which obviously all of these I've talked about in wrap ups, previous videos, whatever, but this is my compilation of out of what I think I've read like 46, 47 books so far this year. These are like, I think I have what, the eight hottest that I'm picking. So either really high spice content or just like when the spice is there, it is absolutely delectable. That's what we're gonna talk about today. There's, there's nothing really else to it. So let's go ahead and just jump on in. So this is in no particular order. And honestly, I was gonna go in like order because I did them like chronologically, but I'm not gonna do that. Let's jump around a little bit. And first of all, let's jump into one of the highest content ones that I have on this list. And that is For the Love of Cain by Ames Mills. So this one is an MMMM. I, I think it's like supposed to be why I choose. They're also like all together. So anyways, and also like a mafia romance and also like dom sub dynamic. So this one follows Cain and he is the head of the mafia, some mafia branch in New York. And and basically he has this bodyguard Blaze who is also his BFF who he also used to kind of be with and Blaze also has a partner that he's with more in just like a physical sense they don't really have like that emotional connection I mean they do but like Blaze is fighting it and Kane used to kind of be a third with them however when he felt that he was kind of intruding on that he pulled back and now when he is off at this one charity gala that he's trying to like make appearances at to be like oh look I'm just like this regular businessman he ends up meeting this other guy there that they hit it off, he brings him home, they have a great night, and basically from that point on they are inseparable, and then eventually all four of them kind of form this relationship together. While at the same time that that is all going on, Kane is having some issues with his business, he thinks he has a mole on the inside that he is trying to smoke out, and at the same time he also has law enforcement like really trying to bring him down, like breathing down his neck. So there's a lot of like outside dynamics going on on top of the four characters all trying to figure out their relationships together and let me just tell you this book is insanely spicy like I mean like I said all four of them are together and also they like to do some interesting things like I said dom sub dynamics come into the mix between both pairs and then also like swapping people around I loved this book though because genuinely I felt the emotional connection between them all. I loved the plot stuff that was going on with the mafia. It's super fast paced. Honestly, out of all the ones on this list, this might be one of the like highest up in terms of like spice content. Next up, let's go with an absolute treat, a treat. Elodie Hart really blessed us with Cal, and that is Untethered by Elodie Hart. This is the fourth book in the Alchemy series. They are all interconnected standalone, so you don't need to read any of the prior books in order to read this one, although I highly recommend this entire series. Unfurl, the first one, is still my favorite, but this one follows Cal and Ada, so it all is centered around this club called Alchemy, which is a spicy club, and Cal is one of the owners, and at the beginning of this book, you've seen him in the other books, and he's very much known as like the fun playboy kind of one who's like always down for a good time, like no one really takes him too seriously, whatever and he's kind of like that has kind of gotten to him a little bit but he also knows his role that he kind of plays in things however when Ada approaches Alchemy about doing a documentary with them they end up matching Cal up with her to kind of be like her spirit guide in her uh, journey that she's going to be going on in this documentary so Ada is a very well-known journalist she was like a news anchor interviewed tons of people like very much in the public eye and with that she went through a very public divorce where her husband cheated on her and she basically wants to show the public that just because she's like 40 doesn't mean that her like entire being is wrapped up in being like a mother and like that sexuality doesn't have an expiration date so she wants to do this documentary to kind of show that it's like women in their 40s like women in whatever stage of life can still like own themselves have a good time what have you and in doing that documentary she ends up getting paired up with Cal and so obviously it kind of starts out that they're just doing this for the documentary but then real feelings end up coming into play it is a reverse age gap which is really fun and I think it's about like 10 years older than him and Cal just like is obsessed with her and like he's always had a crush on her because he's always thought that she's super hot but also he like loves her intelligence he loves everything that she stands for and just really like falls head over heels for her but I will just say Elodie I know you're not watching this but if you are if you ever see this clip thank you for the masked night at this club 
Oh my god, that was one of the most like fun scenes across this entire series. I think it might be like one of my favorite scenes ever. And just like it's a rent free scene. Uh, they have a little masked night at Alchemy that Ada ends up going to the club for and Cal is wearing, uh, you know what, I'll just let you read it and find out for yourself. I love Cal. I am a Cal fan forever and always. Um, yeah, like love Rafe. I still love you. But honestly, Cal's my favorite man. From this whole series next up let's go with something darker you want some, well i mean for the love of kane is like a little bit dark uh but let's again go in a bit of a darker direction and that is going to be distrust by gn wright so this is the first book in a four book series i have read the first two and they do go in chronological order so all so like the first two books both end on cliffhangers so this one our heroine she is the daughter of the head of the hollowed crows mc and her dad really tried to keep her out of the club business growing up however as she got older he couldn't really keep her away anymore and one day when she's a teenager she ends up sneaking into the compound and she meets our three heroes and they all become friends and she like kind of gets integrated into the club a little bit more and on her 18th birthday she decides that she doesn't want to just be friends with her three friends anymore and they all end up sharing a night together however when she wakes up the next morning they are all gone and then something ends up happening where she is kidnapped and she is held captive for two years and then where we pick up in the present she is now back home however her father has passed away so one of our heroes is now the head of the club with his two other friends and they hate her the time apart has not been kind to any of the four of them and she hates them they hate her however she's back and she's like this is my dad's legacy like I'm not walking away this is where I belong but they're like but you don't belong here I won't say anything more plot wise I'll because I don't want to accidentally spoil anything here but I will just say that it is a long journey of the four of them kind of coming back together but let me tell you our heroine she's like I have seen some shit and you guys trying to like push me out, be mean to me, harass me, do whatever you do to me. It can't be worse than what I already went through. And when they kind of realize that they're kind of like, have we been wrong this whole time? But everyone's stubborn. Oh, anyways, it's just great. I love it. Definitely darker. Um, Like I said, it starts off with a bang. It's so good. It's so good. I still need to finish this series. Like I said, I read the first two books, really enjoyed both of them. Uh, lots of twists and turns and our heroine is definitely not a doormat at all even though these guys push her and push her and push her to her absolute limits she can push right back and i love that it's it's great let's go with nikki sloan if there what is one thing that you should know about picking up any nikki sloan book is that you're gonna have a hot time and the good girl in the nashville neighbors series is no exception in that this is the fifth book again interconnected standalone so you don't need to read any of the original ones in order to read this one however you do see both of these characters in previous books so this one follows sydney and oh what preston preston and sydney oh it is a brother's best friend good girl bad boy romance so the first book in the series the doctor is an ex-boyfriend's dad and preston is the ex-boyfriend whose ex-girlfriend ends up getting with his dad and in that book you're like preston sucks like why would you ever root for him like yes cassidy get with dr Lowe. he's like the way better option however preston now at this point has really done a lot of work on himself he's grown up he's really matured he has a business now with some of his friends that he's really just trying to like prove to people that he's made strides in his life and that he is someone to be trustworthy and you know that he's just that he's doing good for himself and Sydney is in her senior year of college that she has gone to because that is what her parents wanted she made a deal with them like hey I go through school then I get to go to culinary school right and they end up revoking that and in doing so she's like you know what I have been this good girl my entire life they are very controlling of her and she's finally like no more I'm gonna get back at you and how better to do that than to get with Preston in front of them because they know who Preston is because that is their son's best friend and they have basically shunned their son his book is the fourth book in the series and he is a spicy cam worker basically they shun him for that and so they do not like Preston they don't like anything about him and when she starts bringing him around she's kind of like getting her revenge and she wants him to basically show her how to be bad she's been good her entire life she's followed all the rules and it hasn't really gotten her to be happy so she's like you know what I'm gonna start doing things that make me happy and Preston reluctantly ends up agreeing to that even though he is very scared of getting with Sydney and what it could do with his relationship with his best friend because like I said he's really been trying to show his friends and everyone around him that he's better and that he's making good choices. I love this one. It's my favorite in National Neighbors. It's in the running for being a favorite book of the year for me. And let me just tell you, I love, I love everything that Preston brings out in Sydney in this book. It's absolutely fantastic. The entire National Neighbors series is super hot. What do we have 
next let's go with vengeful gods by elliot rose so this one is a why choose dark revenge romance so our heroine in this one her dad is basically he was the head of this secret society that deals with very very bad things like trafficking people like really shitty things he was a really shitty person and she basically ran when she was younger and so now she has her own life she has a tattoo shop she has friends she's kind of been like living her life away from that that is until one night a man's ended up showing at her tattoo shop uh they kind of hit it off they have a bit of a connection he ends up asking her out on a date she agrees and then on said date he ends up drugging and kidnapping her and when she wakes up she realizes that she cannot run from the past that she has been and basically our three heroes they are all also a part of the secret society however they are trying to infiltrate it to take it down they are they all have their own reasons for that i won't get into that i'll let you kind of learn that as you read the book but they all have their reasons for hating our heroine and her dad her dad is now dead so basically she's the heir so that's why they kidnapped her because she's kind of their ticket into taking this all down and she was like I don't want anything to do with this like I literally ran like I hate my dad like y'all hate him I hate him too whatever but they don't really care to hear anything that she has to say however when she's staying with them they all eventually start you know being attracted to one another and also two of the guys are together which like yes I honestly their dynamic was like my favorite of the whole thing it's this revenge romance uh that also turns into everything else with them once again so fun so hot such a great time three more left still um okay where do I want to go next let's go mm let's go with hidden scars by Annie Jackson mm roommates teammates hockey college romance so this one oh it's Preston and what's the other guys is it Jamie uh, Jeremy I was close Jeremy and Preston so Jeremy is a college student at this one university he plays hockey and he just does it because he loves it like he knows he's not going pro so he kind of takes it as seriously as he needs to and as with a lot of the other guys on the team that is until Preston shows up and as soon as Preston does everyone is kind of like what is he doing here because he is this insanely talented hockey player who could be at a better program and even the coach is like hey Preston has chosen to come to our school so like we need to kind of get it together for him and when Preston rolls in he's having no one's bullshit he's like he's in the gym he's working out he's on his diet plan he is like head in the game like no bullshit no time for friends no time for anything else he just like has his eye on the prize and anyone who doesn't want to be on that same level as him he like completely disregards and he ends up getting roommates with Jeremy and they just immediately like don't really connect Jeremy tries to like make a connection with him but Preston is just like basically a closed off wall that is until Jeremy starts cracking through little by little and Preston comes from a prominent family his dad is a very famous surgeon and so like he has this kind of family name and reputation to uphold but not everything is as it seems and I will say definitely check your triggers this book does it's darker than I was expecting it to be uh but just truly seeing Jeremy like work down Preston and seeing Preston like slowly learn to trust Jeremy it's so good and also like the tension of them like eventually that like dislike that they kind of have for each other boils over with them being roommates and it turns into more like a little bit of like blowing off of steam until it turns into like their emotional connection so good though I love everything about this book I like I said the emotional bond that these two have honestly for me like overrides everything else in the story I just truly felt like their soulmate deep connection uh but yeah it's also very hot and very fun um and obviously it's hockey which I just love so anyways if you haven't read this yet check it out okay last two and these are my two most recent reads so that's why I'm keeping them at the end of this video so that way in case if you just watched my wrap up on Tuesday then you're not like getting these right off the bat so next up is the Sinner by Chantel Tessier as as if you have read a single Chantel Tessier book you just know she goes there she goes there with her books and it should be no surprise that this one is on the list like Carnage was on my list last year Sabotage was like all time kind of up there uh so this one is the second book in the Lord series uh it's a dark secret society romance where basically uh the Lord's men you know they get initiated into it and for their three years of celibacy during their initiation in their fourth year they are then given a lady and that is kind of their reward and basically when you are a Lord you don't ask questions you just like do what is asked of you but you kind of like reap the benefits of being a lord and being like a god in society you know and sin starts out by killing ellington's step 
stepdad um and then having a bit of a moment with her however he is masked so she has no idea that he is the one who did that and that it is her best friend's older brother and kind of like a guy that she's been obsessed with she just thinks that this masked man kind of like swooped in and did this and kind of rescued her a little bit uh so she ends up kind of falling for this masked man but then at the same time in real life sin is now starting to pursue her and she's now kind of being like oh do i want masked man do i want sin whatever not knowing that they aren't the same person and let me just tell you sin is utterly obsessed with her completely obsessed and he's not gonna stop at anything when she is not offered up to be a lady in his fourth year he's like well screw that i don't care about whoever my chosen is like i want ellington and he's not gonna stop at anything in order to get her i don't even know what else to say i feel like if you if you've read chantel tessier books then you know and if you haven't um very heavy into like bdsm degradation uh dub con you know just definitely check your triggers on these but yeah uh absolutely wild absolutely wild stuff ahead if you're choosing to pick this one up last but certainly not least is shattered obsession by tina spencer if i would and also like i'm not including legacy of gods on here although i will just make a plug here all of the legacy of gods books as well i would say are some of the hottest books i just feel like i literally spent how long i spent like probably 20 minutes talking about them in my wrap up on Tuesday. But like also all of these belong on here. If I'm being specific of like hottest, I would go with God of Wrath. If I chase you, I get you, if you know what I'm saying. And then also Creighton, um, a little bit of a sadist. And Annika finds out she likes the pain that he gives her. Um, and then also God of Fury, I would say probably. I would say those are also all in the running, but just because I literally just talked about those books for so long the other day, I didn't want to take up another video doing these, but I will also say Legacy of God series 100% belongs in hottest books that I've read this year. But we're going to talk about Shattered Obsession by Tina Spencer, which is if I hadn't read Legacy of God, this would have been my favorite book that I read in May. So this is a dark brother's best friend hockey romance. So our heroine in this one, she ends up getting transferred for work to the New York office. And when she arrives there, she ends up moving in with her older brother, who she used to be pretty close to, but like over the years has kind of drifted apart because they've lived in different cities and have kind of gone about their lives. And uh, when she moves in there into his penthouse, uh, her brother's best friend also lives in that building as well. And she has always been attracted to him. However, it's been off limits because the brother is like really strict about being like, he's just as much my family as you are. And like, I don't want that like getting mixed. So like, they both know that they are off limits to each other. However, the brother's best friend, our hero, not happy to see our heroine there because he has been obsessed with her for years and what she does not know but he does know is that they actually had a masked encounter night and they are actually very evenly matched in certain things and she does not know that because he was masked the entire time but he does know that that was her so she has been obsessing over this masked secret man for years not knowing that that is her brother's best friend and our hero in this one he is a hockey star and his coach is kind of starting to be like hey you got a reputation and like just because you're a star doesn't mean you can get away with that you kind of got to start cleaning your shit up and it does end up turning into a fake dating thing as well let me tell you I genuinely think so we get the flashback so in the present day not much I mean obviously there's tension there's like a lot of like tension with the two of them that is great it's sizzling it's boiling however we don't really get a lot in terms of like other things with that but what we do get is chapters of the flashback of that night let me tell you I think a night with this man would cure all of my anxiety. I quite literally think I would just be cured. The flashbacks of that night, so good. This man is so possessive and so just like, I I, I don't even know. I was talking about, because Cheyenne from that talk book girl, I got her to read it. And she was texting me about it last night because she had finished it. And she was like, this man is insane. And I'm like, right, right. These flashbacks are so good. And so yeah, even though like the present, it is the first book in a duet, the second book duet comes out this month, it does end in a cliffhanger. But even though like the current present day of their relationship doesn't have as much in terms of, you know, that, these flashback chapters, trust, trust me, it carries it. Um, this book is amazing. I love it so much. I will be dropping everything to read book two when it comes out at the end of this month. And yeah, just go and check it out. So anyways, that is it for the list of the hottest books that I have read so far this month or this year. 
this year, obviously. Everything that I talk about on this channel, unless if I specify that it's clean, is not clean. So any of the other books that I've talked about, they also are all spicy as well, but just some more than others or some have that little bit of like extra something something. And that's basically like what is in this video. So anyways, that is it for today's video. What was I going to have up next week? Let me grab my planner here because I do have it planned out. I want to say I'm doing the Oh yeah, I'm gonna do books you want me to read. So watch out for that. Oh no, by the time that this video is up, I probably already have asked that on my Instagram. So anyways, I'm gonna do books that you guys want me to read next Tuesday. I don't have anything down for next Friday yet. So we'll see what I come up with. Um, but that's what you can expect next week to start out with. So anyways, that is it for today's video and I will see you when I see ya.